Hello, people. This is Eric Cobra. And Rana Naraja. World War One. And Divinia. And this is Let's Play Lone Wolf Blind. Now, who can remember what happened last time? Well, we we went uh, we went look, we're going to a, we started a journey to a city called Varada. Yeah, where uh, we have to find an old man who lives in the streets. Or in the yes. house in the street. Because he knows where to That's find awesome. the all my coffin. Yes, in Brad Street <laughs> in Ver in And we're supposed to look for a, a sage called Gwynian. Also you ran into a charming young lad named Vork. Hmm. Yeah. By the way, was it It was Vlada? a whole lot of trouble. Hmm. Ronald, you were saying was it, yeah, was it uh Sorry, one of the names, if I got it wrong, was it Varada or something like that? Varetta. Okay, sorry, I was just thinking Varada as in Clato Varada Nikto, in case it threw some evil dead at us. Yeah, that's not it, dude. It's yeah, on your yeah. map if you want to see how it's spelled. Yeah, okay, I was just getting a little suspicious, and we already faced the army of the dead. That you did, and you kicked its ass. As you have to. Yep. In any case, um, I will just reread this paragraph here. Uh, it is later. It is late afternoon when you catch your first breathtaking glimpse of Vareta. Built on a massive plateau, this city has stood since time immemorial. The walls and buildings are immense, constructed from blood red rock and crowded together in complicated splendor. Great stone dragons writhe along the battlements, their coiled tails entangling the gatehouses and poles of the outer wall. And spirals of smoke rise from the mouths of angry faced gargoyles, crouching like spies on top of the roofs and towers that fill the sky. The sun has set by the time you reach the each gate, east gate. The red coated guards offer no challenge, and you pass into the wide streets of this magnificent city. To arrive eventually at a quadrangle, a pillar of red stone indicates the names of the streets that lead away from the square. Do you wish to go north into Helen Way, west to the coach, coach house, south along Flu Flute Street? Or east on the road you just came from. Mm. We need to find this Bora Street. Well, Bora Street was one of the options, so. Eh. The first one you said, because we have to do something. Yeah. Right, north into Helen Way. You pass many soldiers of different races and nationalities, lolling in urban doorways or squatting against red brick walls. They are mercenaries, drawn to a red by the news of war in the north. They come in search of employment for the chance for the chance to sell their skills to any buyer, indifferent to the justness of his cause. Beneath a black iron lantern you notice a group of men throwing dice against the side of a wall. Do you wish to stop and ask him uh, the way to Brass Street, or would you rather continue on your way? Maybe we should ask them. Yeah, there's no harm asking for directions. Huh, a man stopping up to ask directions. Bet that's gonna surprise me. Unless, well, of course you could risk disturbing them, but then, yeah. At first we pretend not to have noticed you, but eventually a stubbly-faced soldier disdains to answer. Let the dice decide, he says, his face red and glowing in the light of a lantern. He raises his hand, spits on his palm, and throws a bone die against the wall. Gunir, roll the die. Against the wall. Five. Well, tis not your lucky night, stranger. The die command me to hold my tongue. He and his swarthy companion turn their backs on you and laugh as they continue their game. You shrug your shoulders and press along the crowded streets. Assholes. A wagon draws up beside an empty fountain. Its tailgate flaps down to reveal a cargo of freshly baked bread, and a rush of hungry soldiers flood round like bees to honey, desperate to buy some of their mouth-watering fare. You have not eaten today, and the delicious smell weakens your sleeping appetite. The loaves are two gold crowns each, and each loaf counts as one meal. You may purchase as many loaves as you wish. Unless you eat a meal now, you must lose three endurance points. Not sure if you can hunt in here, since you're in the middle of the city. Not unless we want to catch a fresh piece of rat, and I do not think we want that. Yeah, I 
I don't think you can. It would seem strange, but what do you guys think? Yeah, the mighty well, kind. Uh, uh, like uh, Rana pointed out, there are animals that you can eat in cities, but they're usually either some guy's pet or they're rats. So which may have the plague. Is, uh, <laughs> and well, by the way, by the way, am I the only one who sees the whole thing as? The mighty kind or chasing like a lunatic up and down the street after come here rat as something that is quite non necessary. We can always sell them as rabbits to the local tavern. Huh. Actually That's people did that. They what? Yeah. Uh, anyway, Fred Fred, what do we do? We buy some bread. What do we yeah, do? I assume so. How much do we buy? Let's see, it was two crowns, a loaf, Yep. and uh, we have 13 coins left. I say, just to make sure that we buy one loaf of bread. And, and, you and you don't have any supplies left because, well, rats ate your food. Ah. How ma many spots in our backpack do we have? I think we have... Um, this one says that we have two left. Well then, let's buy three loaves of bread if we have to do it. Yeah, they need one now and put the two others in our backpack. All right, let me see. You do, uh, Rana, you do remember there's eight slots in your bag, right? Yes. Okay, just want to make sure. Okay, but we buy three loaves of bread while we eat one now. Okay, so that's six gold crown to use up. Okay, just let me correct this. That means that we have seven gold crowns left to our name. Right. And we are munching on a piece of bread. Good. You, oh, are, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> you arrive at a tavern, but one that looks more like a huge banqueting hall than a city alehouse. The Inn of the Crossed Swords is the largest and no noisiest tavern you have ever seen. A constant flow of soldiers pour in and out of its cathedral-like doors, and the adjoining stable is large enough to house the horses of an entire army. Also, picture. Jesus Christ. Just this a moment. Real... Hey, speak again. Am I, the yeah. only one... Am I the only one who gets the mental picture of some very rowdy Valhalla? Or maybe I should just check the picture. Uh... Oh dear. Oh, hey, it's uh, the Mtelis on the <laughs> You stable your horse and enter the tavern just in time to witness a spectacular event. The middle of the hall has been cleared to allow a horse and rider to gallop the full length of the building, and bets are being laid on the rider's skill at skewering fruit on the point of his lance. It reminds you of part of the training taught to Kylos in preparation for battle. But unlike the Kai horse trials, there's more than just skill and the honor of the rider at stake here. In a line along the length of the hall, kneel ten soldiers from the same regiment as the rider, men accused of cowardice in battle. The fruit the rider must skewer are resting on their heads. If he makes the slightest mistake, the men will lose their lives, and more importantly to the mercenaries, all the money the regiment has wagered on the skill of the rider. Do you wish to stake some money in this deadly game? Do you wish to approach the bar and talk to one of the barmaids? Or would you rather just sit down at one of the tables? I support the whole going over and asking information, but we cannot stop this? Nope, that's not an option. Seriously, cowardice in battle leads to being used as target practice for lances. Absolutely, yeah, yeah I can kind of say, say that, although the goal is to not hit them. Okay, this sounds like the punishment for cowardice in battle in Japan sound same. Yeah, well, that's the kind of punishment you often face in these times for not behaving in battle. Oh god, on a seahorse. Let's just go to the bar. <laughs> that's a picture. Right, anyone agrees with that? I agree. I agree. Patiently, you wait for one of the overworked tavern girls to notice you, but before you can raise your hand and attract her attention, you're suddenly aware of the sharp point of a dagger being pressed against your spine. Um, hi. The people around here are so friendly. Your purse or your life, whispers the swarthy faced mercenary who has appeared inside. Make your, make your mind up quickly, or my friend may be a little careless with his knife. Do you wish to use hunt mastery? You didn't have that, did you? No. Alright. Let me see. Let me see. Hunts. 
No, you now didn't just have one thing. Right, then you have to decide whether you wish to hand all your gold crowns without offering any resistance, or if you rather try to fight them. Fight. I agree. Fight. I know yeah. it's over a few coins, but still. You pull away and unsheath your weapon in one swift, fluid movement. The dagger graces your side, lose one endurance point, but you manage to avoid being seriously wounded. Both men sneer maliciously as they close in for the kill. You cannot evade them and must fight them both as one enemy. You are up against the backstabbers. Very fitting. Obviously. Yep. Seriously, why does adventurers like us have to deal with the lowest scum possible sometimes? I don't think they know who you are. So, in any case, give me a roll the die. Eight. Right! Eight! Well, in one swift, fluid mo mo movement of your sword, you cleave one man in two. His partner look... Shot would be the apt description. <laughs> if you feel like urinating your trousers, now is the time to do it before I cut you down as well. Yeah. Roll again, give an ear. Seven? Right. The man then charges against you with a raised dagger, and then with another fluid mo movement, you cut straight through his ragged clothes and scrap mail armor and send him to the floor in two pieces. You defeated the backstabbers! As I said, be As I said before, the summer sweat is sort of like the fantasy equivalent of a fucking lightsaber. Your speedy dispatch, you don't say, game, of the robbers has earned your five gold crowns, which you find in the pockets of the dead men, and the respectful glances of several mercenary captains. Yay, we kill people. We get respect. One in particular is so impressed by your fighting prowess that he approaches you and offers to buy you a drink. You sense that it is an honest gesture of friendship without any hidden threat, and gratefully accept his offer. Okay. The captain is an imposing man, tall, muscular, with a strong jawed face, unmarked by battle or disease. His blonde hair is cropped close to his head, and likewise his beard and moustache are trimmed close to his tanned skin. I'm sorry, are we talking with an Armstrong? Huh? At what? An Armstrong. You know, the Armstrong family. Lots of muscular dudes with blonde hair, really oh. beautiful people. <laughs> have a lot of stuff passed down through the Armstrong line for generation. No, no I, I don't, don't think I ever met one. Oh. Well, I think you have now. You're invited to join his company, and as you drink your ale, you listen to the proud talk of war and vic of victories, of loot and wages, but never of defeat. The captain and his men have grown tired of the war in the north. Prince Janville of Helen is close to ruin having sold all he owns to pay for a war against Baron Magau of Carcast, that he cannot hope to win. The prince's troops are demoralized and his mercenaries desert him at the first opportunity. You learn that the captain is recruiting men for a campaign in the south. The war between Salonia and Slobia has reached boiling point, and there is much gold to be had in the service of the Salonese prince Everwin while he besieges the city of Tecaro. Okay, can we stop here for a moment so I can pen all that down? If you desire, sure. Yes. Okay, be right back. We're back. You have the mean of a skillful warrior, says the captain, his steel blue eyes cold and unblinking. Why not join my company? It has passed down the Armstrong line for generations. I have <laughs> need of fighters, and I pay with gold, not promises. We leave for Tekawa at dawn. Will you ride with us? Politely, you refuse the captain's offer, saying that you have come to the red on other businesses. What business is there for a warrior? Other than war, retorts the captain to the rock. Curious delight of his men. You finish your ale and bid the captain and his company good night. If you change your mind, join us at Soren. We sail the river from there in two days' time. 